Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We would like to thank you for attending this webinar on our VL Equities Europe Fund. This fund, managed by Yvon Bouillot for more than four, 15 years now, applies the business-like investing investment philosophy of VLI that focuses on the generation of attractive long-term risk-adjusted returns. The strategy is benchmark agnostic, conviction-based, and aims to invest in high-quality companies that benefit from solid competitive advantage, a strong capacity of free cash flow generation, and a strong ESG profile. The recent months have been challenging in the context of style rotation that started early November. On a yearly basis, as of end March, the fund generated a return of 3.8%, while the MSCI Europe net return gained more than 8%. On a longer term horizon, the fund is still ranked first quartile in its Lipper Peel book on three, five, and ten years. Before starting, a few words on Banque de Luxembourg investments. VLI is the asset management arm of Banque de Luxembourg. We manage around 14 billion euros, of which 41 are invested in few equity strategies. Please feel free to ask questions in written using the QA system. We will try to answer them just after the presentation. A summary of the call will be published in the coming days. And now, I leave the floor to Yvan Bouillot, the fund manager of VL Equities Europe, who will give you an update on his strategy and the portfolio. Ivan. Thank you, Francoise. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining our update call on VL Equities Europe. Uh, before jumping into the presentation, I will uh, just briefly uh, share two pieces of information, which I know might be uh, important to some of you. Uh, firstly, uh, following the integration of uh, our ESG analysis into our process, uh, Bellequities Europe has been certified with the French ISR uh, label end of last year. And uh, secondly, as uh, this is a topic uh, we, we're talking quite a lot currently, uh, regarding the uh, SFDR uh, regulation, Bell Equities Europe will fall under the Article uh, 8. So despite uh, the few words uh, by Francois about the, the presentation, about the methodology, I will uh, quickly uh, recap it before uh, jumping into the, the performance and performance attribution. Uh, so Bellequities Europe is a portfolio I've been ma managing since uh, 2014, according to a stock picking process, where uh, I consider each investment as an equity stake in a company. Uh, as such, uh, I strive to look for transparent companies I feel comfortable to own for three to five years and companies solid enough to generate attractive compound returns. I think these attractive returns uh, are mostly generated by companies exhibiting a differentiated competitive advantage, which is the underlying factor of long term value creation through attractive return on capital invested with healthy balance sheets. Uh, of course, following our, the integration of our ESG uh, consideration into the methodology, the selection process is on an ex ante basis dependent on an attractive ESG profile by the companies. The portfolio typically has 30 to 35 holdings. It is uh, unbenchmarked, resulting in great flexibility of allocations. And the portfolio construction process relies heavily on the course of the business of the individual companies and their absolute or relative valuations. And finally, the portfolio has a defensive growth profile. So moving now into uh, performance here today, performance, and I can even address the last, uh, last uh, and fourth quarter 2020 uh, performance at the same time. So as Francois said, uh, return year to date is uh, weak and disappointing. Uh, the portfolio uh, Performance-wise, we're going through a challenging period, so uh, don't hesitate to ask questions uh, during the, uh, this presentation or to ask for a dedicated call. Uh, since October 20 uh, and the announcement of the uh, anti-COVID vaccines, uh, market drivers have significantly changed. Uh, essentially, expectations of an economic recovery and rising yields translated into a fast market rotation uh, into deep cyclicals and value stock, while some momentum stocks kept performing well. 
And unfortunately, having few, if any, uh, of the former so cyclicals and value stocks in our universe, and being, as you know, quite conservative on uh, valuation, BLUPT zero performance lack the markets since the end of 2020, with two significant, significantly difficult months, which were uh, November 2020 and March 2021. And so here today, return remains below the index. Uh, end of March, we stood at 3.8% return, while the, the index, the MSCI Europe, uh, net total return stood at 8.4%. So here, two, 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 two uh, factors explain the continuous underperformance. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the, the continuation of the market rotation, and as we will see, some negative stock picking impact from uh, a few holdings. Uh, however, it's important maybe to mention that we are not impacted by important failures in our different uh, investment uh, thesis. I have added here a slide to illustrate the rotation that is taking place uh, within the market uh, year to date and uh, partly explains uh, why we, we are uh, 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 unable really to keep, uh, to keep traction with the market uh, since the beginning of the year and end of last year. Here we see the uh, earnings uh, revision dynamics within the, the European markets uh, for uh, different sectors or different themes. And uh, as you can see, since the beginning of the year, uh, the main sectors which are benefiting from a significant positive earnings revisions uh, are uh, mostly deep cyclicals or uh, typically what uh, are referred to a value uh, sectors like uh, uh, on top of it, uh, the green line on the, on the top of the chart is basic resources. Then if you go down, it's oil and gas. If you continue down, it's automotive and, and then it's, uh, it's banks. And as you can see, the two uh, lines, the red and yellow one on the bottom of the chart represent the MSCI Europe growth EPS revision and the uh, stock 600 uh, defensive earnings revision. And uh, of course, since uh, October and uh, since, the, uh, since the beginning of the year, uh, the market has been reflecting uh, these increased earnings expectations from a very low levels. Uh, for uh, the cyclicals and, and deep value sectors, expecting uh, the, the end of the uh, economic crisis uh, driven by, the, by the, the COVID, or at least an improving uh, economic and financial situation uh, globally. If we put this into a perspective on a more uh, long-term uh, basis, we can see on the uh, shaded area on the right of the chart, uh, the impact uh, of a uh, until now. Uh, whereas the long-term picture continues to show uh, an outperforming trend, we've been uh, significantly rebounding less than the market since uh, October. So it's a difficult period for you clients and for us uh, portfolio managers. Uh, but I mean, just would like to, to, to highlight, we've been through these uh, difficult periods before because we, we do not invest in, in close to 40% of the index. But we are really uh, uh, constructive and optimistic that uh, uh, going out of this phase, uh, uh, certain typical company we look for will continue to, uh, to, to outperform. Uh, maybe it's important to mention that uh, since the beginning of the month of April, uh, we are seeing uh, a slow normalization of the situation with uh, Bellicity Europe having been able to, to start to, uh, to outperform again and to reduce the year-to-date on performance, uh, the performance I uh, illustrated uh, before. In terms of uh, performance uh, attribution and, and, and contribution, uh, yeah, in terms of sectors, I mean, uh, uh, useless to say that we've been impacted by the lack of investments in uh, financials and uh, energy and uh, essentially benefited from our exposure in uh, the industrial uh, sector. Uh, the main contributors to performance were essentially in uh, cyclical, uh, industries, industrials, chemicals, or consumer uh, discretionary. We list here the first 10 uh, contributors uh, to the performance here to date. We first, we, we see them here, Asa Abloy in the construction market, a Swedish company, uh, Sika uh, chemicals, specialty chemicals company in uh, Switzerland, uh, selling uh, its product to the uh, uh, construction industry too, so LVMH the uh, global uh, luxury uh, company. Uh, DCC, a wholesaler of uh, energy, pharmaceuticals, and technology products. 
and uh, Novozymes, uh, one of the world leader in the uh, in the enzymes market. Uh, Asa Abloy essentially uh, benefited from a share price recovery from quite a low valuation at the, at the beginning of the year, uh, thanks to uh, improving business dynamics and uh, reassurance from the company uh, regarding the uh, margin outlook for 2021 with the construction uh, market and construction PMIs uh, improving uh, globally. Sika, uh, the main holding of the portfolio, uh, generated quite good returns. And uh, while well, the company has been able to maintain very high levels of business activity and, and profitability even throughout the crisis. And uh, we flag here, I mean, market share gains due to very strong customer relationship and a very high quality uh, product portfolio. And it's a performance driven uh, product portfolio, uh, one stop shop uh, approach that translates into a strong pricing power, which supports uh, organic growth for Sika uh, globally. They just uh, released earnings uh, yesterday, which showed uh, really uh, uh, very strong dynamics, uh, thanks essentially to uh, uh, Asia uh, and the US, but also uh, Europe uh, since the beginning of the year. And LVMH also a nice contributor. Uh, I mean, uh, the company uh, since September 2020 has had a really, a really good performance uh, with a strong recovery of demand uh, uh, starting in Asia, but also following through uh, the US uh, over the months. In terms of uh, ne negative contributors to the uh, to the performance, uh, well, we see mainly uh, defensive companies or some uh, uh, technology companies. Uh, there is no, as I said in the introduction, no really a, uh, investment thesis uh, weak, and I think it's mostly, as I can illustrate now, uh, more punctual uh, than structural. Uh, Team Viewer, which is a company I will uh, present uh, in the in the following slides that uh, I bought last year uh, I fell significantly in a couple of days towards the end of the quarter uh, following an announcement by the company of two big sponsoring uh, contracts which were uh, unexpected at least in terms of magnitude and which came just uh, two weeks after the company confirmed the business outlook and especially the margin outlook for the year 2021 but the size of these contracts with uh, Manchester United and uh, with Formula One and Formula uh, E uh, has led the company to reduce uh, in the end margin expectations for the year. And this was reflected in a significant stock price uh, for decline, which uh, illustrates also uh, the, 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 the surprise impact it had on the, on the market. But I mean, the business case is, is absolutely not uh, put into question following these uh, sponsoring contracts. It might even show that the confidence of the of the management on the on the on the business going forward. Uh, Adidas has been also a, a weak contributor, a negative contributor to performance. <clears throat> So here you might be aware Adidas suffered from the uh, the spat between the Western countries and China uh, over Chinese cotton from the Xinjiang uh, region uh, and the situation of the Uyghur uh, minority and uh, the sanctions that imposed by Western countries on China uh, could result in a, in a Chinese boycott of Western companies and uh, uh, some feedback uh, we can have some of the Chinese consumer uh, illustrates for the moment that uh, they are putting some boycotts on uh, on Western brands, uh, Western uh, brands, and especially uh, uh, Adidas and Nike, which are really uh, uh, big brands growing strongly in uh, in China. So suffering from this situation for the uh, for the moment. And uh, uh, the third negative contributor was uh, Kerry. Um, uh, well, here uh, Kerry has been weak following a cautious guidance uh, from the company for the start of 2021. Uh, and also because of a short seller attack on a, a carrier acquisition strategy, uh, where well, this has been dismissed uh, by the company and, uh, and by many people uh, very close to the, uh, to, the, to the company. So we're not seeing any significant threat to the, to the business case neither. And uh, otherwise, we've been some uh, impacted by some cautious uh, behavior of the market on certain companies, uh, companities that uh, I either consider safe havens uh, in this period, 
like uh, Avast, Christian Hansen, or, or, or Simrise, uh, even Unilever, uh, and also some companies more impacted by the COVID crisis, especially uh, Grifols or Fresenius. As a reminder, Fresenius uh, operates hospitals and uh, hospital activity has been significantly reduced uh, with the COVID crisis as the hospitals take on uh, COVID patients for which profitability is uh, is very much uncertain because we don't know yet how much the government with comp will compensate for this. And uh, Grifols, which uh, company uh, who develops uh, uh, plasma derivative uh, products, they have to collect blood. Uh, and of course, with the uh, uh, lockdowns, people have been less able to go to collection center to give the blood. And so it has been a volume driven weakness for, for Grifols during the, the COVID crisis. So what have we done uh, during this uh, difficult period? I mean, I've been uh, quite active last year, uh, and even at the beginning of the year, uh, following a quite quiet year in 2019. Uh, we're not going to the details of the uh, 2020 transactions, but I mean, I mean, I've been rotating the portfolio in March and uh, around March, April, May, and uh, following the downturn due to the COVID crisis and uh, during the, the rotation uh, towards the uh, the end of the year. Uh, essentially, in terms of new, uh, it was essentially driven by new additions to the portfolio. And so companies that have been uh, completely selling to, we'll see in a couple of slides. Uh, not mentioned here, but last year, uh, you might remember we added companies like uh, Geberit, uh, Sanitary Technology in Switzerland, uh, Dassault System, uh, computer uh, edit design software company, uh, L'Oréal, uh, the global leader in cosmetics. And uh, here we see the uh, list of companies we added towards the, uh, the last of uh, the, the rotation towards the end of uh, last year. So we added Teleperformance, DCC, Curry Group. Team Viewer, uh, Net Company Reply, and uh, and Sweco. I will give a few words on on, on Team Viewer, uh, Reply, and and Sweco in the in the next slides. And also during the year, uh, opportunistically, uh, I increased positions in uh, Asa Abloy, Essilor Luxotica, uh, Grifols, and Air Liquide. And these new additions were essentially driven by uh, attractive entry points, uh, starting to. Uh, uh, modeling or expecting a normalization or improving business output for these companies who have been impacted by uh, by the by the covid uh, by the covid crisis so we see here uh, the last company well, the last one uh, in 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 uh, the first quarter more recently uh, in april i added boost to the portfolio which is uh, zalando competitor, a Swedish company, uh, smaller size, but more focused than, uh, than Zalando, but uh, uh, it will be for the for the next call on more details on, on Boost. But here with Sweco that I added during the, the first quarter, uh, Sweco is a Swedish company. It is uh, Europe's leading engineering consulting uh, consultancy company, uh, active in the fields of consulting, engineering, environmental technology and uh, architecture. Uh, so, in a few words, a Sueco uh, plan, plans and uh, designs a sustainable cities, uh, uh, industries, and, and community infrastructure. Uh, the company assists uh, with the analysis uh, studies, uh, as well as the planning, design, and construction of everything we build in cities, uh, neighborhoods, uh, industries, recycling facilities, etc. And uh, it is a, a company with a, a extremely a deep knowledge in its market and whose business is supported by mega trends uh, like uh, increased urbanization, uh, digitalization also, which helps uh, make uh, cities uh, smarter, and uh, climate change with the need for alternative energies, recycling facilities, etc., uh, which Sweco is uh, assisting uh, companies in, uh, in building. It, is, it has a, a quite nice um, uh, client uh, and industry uh, exposure and a slow but consistently uh, improving top line with, uh, with, uh, with stable uh, margins. Uh, we also added uh, end of last year uh, reply. Uh, reply is uh, an Italian family-run uh, company. It is uh, an IT service uh, provider which uh, acts as a consultant, system integrator, and digital uh, expert. Uh, a large part uh, of its sales is related to technology services linked to uh, the digital transformation of companies. 
and in practice uh, reply supports companies in defining and developing their business models to optimize uh, integrating uh, process application and devices, mostly using new technologies and communication uh, paradigms such as the big data, cloud computing. And of course, the good point here is that most of the companies have to proceed to a transformation and movement to uh, the uh, digital economy, but most organizations have uh, no map, uh, no guidelines, or uh, no uh, expertise uh, in this area. And the reply with a very uh, decentralized uh, business model and very deep knowledge in these new technologies is uh, really able to compete and gain market share uh, versus peers. Uh, even if uh, these peers are big, com big companies like uh, Accenture, for example. And we see on the bottom of the slide uh, the, the nice diversification of uh, verticals of the, of the company uh, in terms of industries they, they serve. And uh, the strong on the right side of the chart of the slide, uh, the strong growth uh, the company is able to, to maintain. On the histogram, we see the sales level, and on the, on the line, we see the, uh, the growth rate of the, of the company which it should be able to, uh, to maintain uh, over time. And finally, a word on, 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 on also on, on, of the last investment uh, last year, which is a team viewer. Uh, you must be maybe a bit more familiar with this one. This is a, a German company active in uh, active for more than than, uh, than twenty years. Uh, team viewer develops a cloud based uh, solutions so or software. Uh, that enable uh, uh, online remote access uh, to uh, IT systems. For example, if you work uh, from home or out of the office uh, traveling, you have to go through uh, security uh, platforms to access uh, your company network and TeamViewer is one of the big companies playing in this uh, industry. So, uh, of course, during uh, the COVID crisis, uh, the use and the subscribers uh, of 14 viewers has been expanding uh, significantly. Uh, but we think with a, a new uh, behavior regarding uh, out of the office working of and uh, collaboration through uh, internet uh, cloud systems, uh, the future is still very attractive for uh, team viewer. Uh, beside from this uh, software that enables remote access to an IT system, uh, team viewer products also enable um, their clients or the, the customers to uh, uh, remote uh, operate machines uh, or to uh, assist clients with uh, 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 after sales services if should they uh, face uh, an issue with uh, with the machines or devices they have bought. So here we see the uh, on the other side of the spectrum the the companies we've been uh, selling uh, last uh, end of the last year or, or in the course of last year and beginning of the year. So it is essentially uh, because of uh, opportunity cost that we sold these uh, these companies. Uh, we had quite a few defensive companies beginning of 2020 uh, because uh, I thought valuations in certain segments of my universe were too expensive which was not the case for def defensive companies. But during the downturn in March and the rotation in uh, October, November, which let some good companies behind, I took the opportunity to, uh, to sell them to, uh, uh, in order to, uh, to take new, new, new ideas into the, the portfolio. Uh, so uh, maybe more specifically towards the end of the year, uh, Intertech was uh, sold. This is a UK certification and inspection service company. This was an arbitrage uh, with uh, its Swiss competitor, uh, SGS, which was trading at more attractive uh, valuations than uh, Intertech. Sage Group was uh, sold to, this is uh, a company similar to SAP, but targeting different kind, different clients and having a product portfolio a bit different, uh, but following the, 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 um, the, the, the weakness of the stock price in SAP that you have followed and uh, over last year took the opportunity to do some arbitrage here too. Uh, I sold also the investment in uh, Roche to fund uh, new investments, essentially uh, uh, investments, uh, increase in exposure uh, towards uh, new investments made last year, like uh, Reply and, uh, and TeamViewer, which were increased in the beginning of the year. 
And uh, finally, also uh, reduced during the course of the year, but accelerated in, uh, in the last quarter, uh, reduced uh, exposure towards Red Kit Benkiser Unilever, which is not in the portfolio anymore, sold it in April, and also reduced exposure to Fresenius, as uh, I am willing to uh, wait for the end of the, uh, the COVID crisis uh, to have more visibility on the outlook for the, for the business and its profitability. So in terms of exposure, where do we stand now? In terms of uh, industry exposure, we have uh, increased last year uh, exposure towards industrials, uh, chemicals, and uh, information technology stocks. Um, industrials and chemicals, uh, represented the materials sector, are our biggest exposure currently. So we, we of course, stay behind the market uh, in this rotation towards cyclicals uh, and value stocks. Uh, we are invested in cyclicals, but not uh, it's more quality cyclicals, which have been rebounding less than the market as they were less impacted by the by the the covid crisis and uh, last year reduced exposure in uh, healthcare and consumer staples companies essentially as you see we don't have exposure to certain sectors uh, this is uh, structural uh, in the energy sector financial utilities and even communication services uh, we find very few candidates in terms of market cap allocation, uh, well, we see here the typical uh, higher allocation than the index we have in companies below 50 billion uh, market capitalization. So 60% in the 10 to 50 billion market uh, cap category and close to 10% below uh, 10 billion euros market cap. No investment below 12.5 billion. We put a limit at uh, 2 billion euros, uh, more or less, uh, to, uh, to include them in the, uh, in the portfolio. And in terms of countries, uh, well, we see a significant exposure to France. This is not a top-down decision, uh, but I mean, last year we, we found, uh, uh, as mentioned before, quite a few uh, new ideas in France, like uh, Dassault System, L'Oréal, Teleperformance, uh, which uh, increased the, the weighting towards, uh, towards the, the country. Uh, otherwise, we see uh, exposure to the typical countries where we, we find candidates of the UK, France, Germany, Switzerland, uh, Sweden, and, uh, and Denmark. Here, uh, top 15 portfolios. So we currently at the end of March with 36 holding. We now have 35 with uh, the uh, sale of uh, Unilever and the, the number of holdings continue to, uh, to decrease towards the uh, 32, 33 uh, in, the, in the coming months. Uh, the top 10 uh, is still uh, heavily represented in the portfolio, close to 50%. Of the uh, of the assets, uh, quite familiar names in the in the portfolio. Uh, we've been increasing smaller uh, smaller holdings in the in the portfolio last year, but it's true that uh, in the top uh, top ten we, we we have kept quite uh, quite the, the, the same holdings. Uh, I'm still very much confident about the uh, Sika uh, outlook and capacity to operate uh, really well in a difficult economic environment or uh, in an accelerating construction market. Um, um, I presented it before. They really earnings yesterday, uh, five, top line 5% above expectations and profitability, uh, also moving higher. Um, so we're still very confident on SICA. Uh, SAP, I'm also quite optimistic on the, on the outlook. I think uh, uh, the company is going through a, a transition you are familiar with. Uh, uh, they have to adapt their um, ancillary software to now the cloud-based solution. So it takes time, but they have a, a, a huge ability to, uh, to keep clients uh, and so not losing too much market share even if even if they have to lose market share to, to new entrants uh, but uh, the ramping up of the business which has already started should continue to improve the organic growth rate and the uh, uh, margin of the of the business uh, still also the exposure to uh, to a uh, SE team this is a consumer tissue uh, a product uh, with a leading global positions worldwide a Swedish company for which I still expect the company to improve its, its profitability. Uh, as Abloy, while well, it moved nicely since the beginning of the year, uh, close to 25%, uh, uh, not reaching yet the, uh, the sell target, but I mean, I'm monitoring it uh, to eventually having to, to reduce it, but still quite optimistic about it. And we see here the uh, allocation uh, of the portfolio towards the different categories in which we invest. So the consistent earners, as you remember, quite the well-established companies like uh, 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 an air liquid, uh, 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 L'Oréal, for example, which represent 55% of the assets in the portfolio, 
the growing franchises company 37% of the assets of the portfolio so we are at uh, the top of the range for this category. Uh, this category has been significantly increased last year towards the, the name I, I mentioned and I presented uh, like a reply to viewer teleperformance. And then we have one single holding in the established value category, which is uh, uh, SCT. And as a, as a reminder, in the established value uh, category, we essentially invest in, uh, in expected turnaround stories like, uh, like SCT. On the right side of the of the chart, we see the the financial uh, ratios for the portfolio. Uh, of course, we have uh, multiples higher than the market, which reflects of course, the quality bias we have. We have a few outliers that uh, pushes the uh, the average a little bit higher, like a Sika, uh, for example. Uh, but otherwise, as you can see at the bottom of the chart of the of the table, also much higher return uh, return metrics. In terms of earnings growth profile for the, the portfolio, uh, according to current portfolio weightings, we have a 26 EPS uh, growth expected for this year, which compares to a 34 for the MSCI Europe. And we have currently, uh, according to consensus, uh, close to 12% EPS growth for uh, next year, uh, comparing to a 14%. Of course, this is uh, always uh, very much uncertain, but it gives a picture of uh, the potential rebound in earnings for the portfolio, which is uh, quite attractive, but uh, definitely below uh, below the market, given the, uh, the, 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 the companies in which we, we invest, which are have been less impacted by the downturn and benefiting less from the, the upturn. We have here the uh, uh, ESG uh, dashboard of the uh, of the portfolio. Uh, I mean, we can go into details in Q and A or in a dedicating uh, session. But I mean, what we want to achieve here is uh, for the different uh, impact objectives we have defined for the label to have a, a better uh, uh, um, average score than for the uh, market. Uh, over time, of course, it's not only to uh, always invest in the best players. We can invest in weaker players that are improved their behavior uh, uh, relating to the environment, social or governance uh, uh, norms. Uh, and we see here that we are quite in line with, uh, with, uh, with uh, our, our objectives. So in terms of conclusions, I mean, uh, I don't think uh, I'm uh, out of the woods yet for the uh, relative performance. I mean, uh, uh, even if it's been easier uh, since the beginning of the month, uh, so short term volatility aside, I think that the sector rotation uh, is likely to continue to persist a, a little bit uh, to in, in, in the course of uh, 2021 probably until the uh, the summer, um, as we see an, imp an improving economic uh, environment and, and improving economic metrics uh, as the start of a, a new cycle. We see also reduced European political risk that might uh, uh, um, uh, reduce exposure to more defensive companies in, in Europe and uh, uh, higher bond yields and, and important value dispersion that uh, uh, still might favor a little bit uh, uh, value cyclical. Uh, sectors. Uh, nevertheless, as we see in the chart I illustrate here, uh, we are coming uh, from, a, we, we have done quite a, a, a long way. The rebound uh, has been significant, uh, very fast, uh, and, and has significantly in ampl amplitude. Uh, we can see now that in terms of a forward price to earning or forward price to book, uh, the uh, cyclicals, which are mostly here, the deep cyclical companies, um, have significantly rebounded versus uh, defensive companies which we see here on a historical perspective. Uh, nevertheless, as uh, the value dispersion was quite high at the beginning of the rebound, we might continue to see a, a slight uh, uh, increase in this, uh, in this uh, uh, ratios. We have here a, a different picture. Uh, as we historically, we we have over the last thirty years. Uh, I mean, different literature shows us that this uh, rotation that we are uh, witnessing have last uh, from nine to twelve months. Some have lasted uh, six months, like in two thousand and sixteen, for example. Uh, some have lasted a little bit longer, but we can see uh, uh, an average duration between nine and, and twelve months. All depends also on, on how fast the rotation goes and this one has been quite uh, quickly quite quick and fast uh, we can see on the chart here uh, the different rotations we've had over the past between a, a high uh, return on invested capital companies and a, a low 
uh, return on invested uh, capital uh, companies. And we see that uh, over time, on a cumulative return, I mean, high quality companies uh, based on uh, ROIC metrics uh, out of the market, but uh, we, we go through different periods uh, of uh, market rotation uh, from 92 to 95, from uh, 2002 to 2004, uh, in 2010, 2011, et cetera. And I think here that the movements we ha we've had is quite significant, as we can see on the right side, uh, of the chart, uh, so we have probably done seventy-five percent to eighty percent of the uh, of the rotation. So I expect things to 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 normalize towards the end of the year, uh, but still probably some uh, some upside for the uh, for the the, the more uh, cyclical companies, so, uh, which uh, might uh, uh, leave us uh, uh, in a still challenging situation. But uh, I mean, we, we we're taking advantage of this difficult period to continue to uh, to uh, to monitor our universe, to continue to look for for new companies and uh, include these companies in the portfolio uh, as we've done uh, last year, beginning of this year, and continue to, to do in the, in the course uh, of the year. So this ends the, uh, the update call. Uh, I would be uh, ready to, uh, to ask any questions, if you have some, or uh, to organize a dedicated call on the, on the portfolio. Thank you very much, Ivan. At the moment, we do not have any questions. Um, please feel free to ask questions now, so Ivan can answer to them directly. Uh, if additional questions are coming after the call, uh, as Ivan said, you can always ask for a dedicated call or ask your sales representative uh, your questions, and uh, he will liaise with us, so we can answer to them. Um, well, I think uh, if there's no questions, we can close the call now. Uh, I would like to thank you all for attending this uh, webinar uh, on BL Equities Europe. I would like to thank you, uh, Ivan, uh, for your time and your dedication to the fund and to this webinar. Um, no more, no questions are coming, so um, thank you very much. Thank you, Ivan. I wish you all a nice week and uh, again, thank you and bye. Okay, thank you, Ron. Thank you. Have a nice day. Goodbye.